This is our final video for section 5.6 and we'll take a look here at example 5 and try to see what happens if we start to deal with things that are potentially oriented downward. So let's see what we have here. How about we let sigma be the portion of the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared that exists below the plane z equals 4. So if I look at the picture that I have over here I can see my paraboloid I can see like the shadow that it kind of casts down here in the xy plane. And this uh, bluish purple part up top is z equals 4. Now the surface itself doesn't contain this, uh, this lid, if you will, up top. It's just this kind of wall, this bluish green wall that I have on the outside. But we're going to suppose that this is going to be um, oriented by downward normals. So that is, I'm going to have normals that are going to be pointed at a slightly downward direction. So of course the moment that I do that, I know that these are going to have to be normals that contain a negative z component, so they can be tilted down. So let's suppose then that the fluid that I'm going to submerge this thing is, the submerge the surface in is going to be modeled by, its motion is modeled by this vector field here. So if I want to compute the flux in the direction of this orientation, let's see what I would do. Okay, well the first thing I have to decide is my initial approach. Do I want to tackle this by creating a parameterization of the surface, or was I already given a surface that's in function form? Well in this case again, I already have a nice z equals formula. And so I can take approach similar to what we did in the last video. I'd ask you to go ahead and see if right now you could pause the video and test yourself to see how well you could set up your capital G and your resulting integral. Just be careful to note that you want something with a downward orientation. Okay, so here's what I got here. I'll start by saying since sigma is given by a function, we know that, or how about instead of saying we know, I'll say we let g of x comma y comma z be equal to z minus our x squared plus y squared which would be z minus x squared minus y squared. So then, when I compute my double integral over sigma of f dot n ds, I know that I can update that to be moving over a region d, and I'm going to have my f dotted with my gradient of g dA. Now again, I have to make sure that this works out okay, and that I don't want that to be the negative gradient, but let's just see what it is first. So my f is again, let's see, 1, y, 1, and my gradient here would be negative 2x, negative 2y, 1. Well, notice right now this is going to pose a problem. If I want to have my orientation be represented by downward facing normals, they need to have a negative z component. And this right now is a positive z. So what this is finding right here are vectors that are going to be kind of pointing from the inside and coming up like this. That might be kind of hard to see, let me change the color. But I'm dealing with vectors that are moving in this direction. That's not quite what I want. So again, to fix that, all I would have to do is to say that I want to go ahead and deal with a negative gradient. So that way I can go ahead down here and change all of these to negative. And that way, when I come and I take a look at my last component here, I'm going to end up with a negative one, which of course matches up with what I wanted in a negative z component. Now the other thing here that becomes a little bit tricky on this question is that we weren't just working over something like a square. Notice here, my surface exists above, well I guess this circular region that I have down here. So if I want to integrate over that d, I might have to think about how I define that. And I can define it with x's and y's, but I don't necessarily have to. 
So first, how about we imagine doing this? We define D in polar as D would be a bunch of points with R comma theta, and I can see that my theta is definitely going to go from 0 to 2 pi, and if I rely on the picture, I can see that definitely my value of R goes from 0 to 2, but how did I get this circle down there? Well, one of the ways that I could establish that circle is by doing this kind of side calculation that I have, or I'm about to show right here. I know that this circle kind of corresponds to the size of the circle that's existing all the way at the top. That's what's casting the shadow. And I know that that circle occurs when z is a 4. So notice, since I have z is equal to x squared plus y squared, and at the top I have z is equal to 4, that creates the following circle up there in purple, which is what's really casting that shadow. And clearly that's a circle with radius 2. So I know then that's how I can establish my r. So this becomes really, really great. If I can define this in polar, this would be way easier to go ahead and try to convert. Now, of course, the other thing that's going to be a little bit complicated here is to say that if I continue with what I have, my uh, resulting integrand is going to look like 2x plus 2y squared minus 1. And so while I know how to set up my bounds, I know how to replace my dA with that r dr d theta, I still have to replace my x and y. But I can do that by remembering that x is the same as just an r cosine theta, my y is the same as an r sine theta, and that's going to create an r squared sine squared, and so I can just end up with this. I then have my r dr d theta, and my bounds, again, are going to go from 0 to 2, and then 0 to 2 pi. So this is how I could ultimately set up this integral. And I won't go ahead and go through the calculation here, but I'll leave it for you to try on your own. But you should be able to confirm, like the notes suggest online, that my final answer is 4 pi. Hopefully this gives you some good examples of how I can deal with things uh, with, or, uh, computing flux with integrals that require a parameterization of a surface, but also ones that don't require a parameterization. And also, I can think carefully about how I'm orienting my surface, which side am I calling up or which side am I calling down, and how I can actually test whether or not I have that by looking at this z component.